So what are you guys? We are the Swartwood family! So are you guys real Swartwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! By the way, uh, on Thursday, just for a little bit, someone's going to come by to take photos for like, you know, Facebook and all that junk or whatever. So if you are photo shy or do not want your photo, you need to let Stephanie know the day of. And basically in any shot, we'll just put a smiley face over your head. Okay. Okay. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. She reminds me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is everybody okay with this? Can we kill it? This is not a joke. This is what, if they wanted to test you on technical stuff, this is about the worst we get. Not a joke. Okay. I've got a mass, but the mass does not start from rest. The mass starts moving at five meters per second down the incline, and it stays that speed all the way down the incline, and it keeps going. So the whole time it's going five meters per second. Obviously, the reason why it's not accelerating is there's some friction thing going on. The coefficient connect friction is 0.1. The, you can use theta in your answer if you want. And the height here is, say, 10 meters. There's one problem, though. I won't put up, it would be even easier if I put up the answer choices. We won't do that since we're working on it together as a class. But when you look at the answer choices, you would expect to see theta in there. You don't see it. There's no theta. They're just numbers. Okay? So what's the question? The question is, uh, along this path, right, from, from, from the top, so my bad, it looks like he's not starting at the top. Imagine he's starting at the very top. Starting at the, top, at the top at five meters per second. So along this entire incline, how much work has friction done? As the guy slides from the very top to the very bottom at a constant speed of five meters per second, how much work has friction done? So that's it. So everybody should try that. Like, how would you approach this problem? Sh show it. Okay, so the mg sine theta, but that's from last time. That's you knowing that that's the pull this way. So I'd have to remember that, okay? So you're saying the, the work of friction is equal to, I like that, the negative, right? Yeah. And you're saying, how, what's the force of friction? It's not mg sine theta. Remember that from last time? Mu k. It's mu k, wow, this is looking complicated already, times the normal force. So that's the force of friction times the distance down here, which he was solving for with x. Yeah. So that x would be, uh, don't even write any of this down, 10 over sine theta. But then to get this, I'd have to do mg, this is so school-like, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, it, there's no, no way this is gonna fly on the test. Not exp even though you, maybe you could do this, they don't expect you to do this in a minute or less. So that's why I love this problem, okay? I love this problem because of the thinking involved. Do it again. And it's really interesting. All the stuff that I say that sounds really simple and really dumb, people go like, oh, that's easy. But then when we get to the diags, when people start missing things, it's because of the simple, dumb stuff. It's never because of this complicated stuff. It's either because the passage is intimidating or you never use the simple stuff. So tell me, wh what's our simple setup? Framing, big framing. Always go energy first. So forget this. This is way too much work. I'm even going to be super sloppy. It might even bug some of you. So I'll come back and do it for real, but I'm going to be sloppy. I'm going to start with conservation of energy because I'm like, I have no idea how to do this. So I'm going to always try to go energy first. Okay? The, height, the potential energy is nice. Isn't that just MGH? Okay. Sorry, I should give you a mass here. Somebody give me a mass. 50. 50. Okay, so I should give you a mass, but usually the results are the same. Okay, so I get this guy. Do you read at the top it's MGH, at the bottom it's what? Zero, so that's nice. What about the kinetic energy? It's not zero in the beginning. That was the part of this problem, that's verbal. It starts at five meters per second, right? But there's th this is actually a verbal problem, which is really what a lot of the science stuff comes down to. It's verbal. You, it's more about reading the question. So what's special about this? Because that just looks like work. You start with a certain mass. I, didn't, I even forgot to tell you what it was, but it doesn't matter. You start with a certain mass, and you're going at a fixed velocity, right? What did I tell you about the velocity all the way down? It's the same. So the velocity doesn't change, and the mass doesn't change. So what do you know about the kinetic energy? It doesn't change. It's the same. So what can you do with the kinetic energy? You can cross it out. So it's totally irrelevant. So now what does the equation become? So should have given me the mass. That's my bad. 50, 10, uh, for g and then a height of 10 equal to zero. Does everybody agree that's what our equation becomes? And this might bug people only because I'm being super sloppy. It's fine. 
So we can go back and do it properly, but does everybody understand how we got to this point? Okay. Then I don't do science, I use common sense. It's not probably the equation that's screwed up, it's probably me. I probably forgot something. So what's the one thing that I'm missing here? The work done by friction. But if you start at, what is this, 5,000? If you start at 5,000 joules, and then you suddenly find yourself at zero, that can't just magically happen. So somebody's got to take this 5,000 down to what? Zero. And the only guy that can take away energy is friction. So how much work must friction do? Negative 5,000. That's it. Okay? This is the way the exam likes to work. And it does exactly this. But it sets it up to be either intimidating or make it look really attractive, like you want to go this way. That's a sucker trap and you'll get frustrated. Okay? But if you go simple principles, it's just like this. And that literally takes seconds. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, uh, let me do one more thing before I answer questions. Um, if that really bugs you and you want to be super anal about it, I just like doing it this way. You know it's got to work out. You know 5,000 doesn't magically go to zero. So who takes that away? Friction. That's it. That's the way I would do it. Okay? If, if that's like, but I didn't see that in my physics book, and it really bugs you, you can put in work done by friction. And you can put in work done by friction. And you, because that's what we're trying to solve for, work done by friction. And you can put in work done by friction. You can bring the 5,000 to the other side, and it's negative 5,000. Okay? Uh, mathematically, you can actually put the work done by friction on the right-hand side, and we can explain that, but you'd have to think about it. I think intuitively, it's always easier to put the friction on the left-hand side, and that way the sign will always be negative. Okay? Okay. You okay with this? What if they call this B sub alpha? Or what if they call that the um, precocious velocity? Whatever. Because they'll do crap like that, right? No, I shouldn't say that on video, but whatever. So, um, so what do you guys think? Uh, you can call it terminal velocity if you want. But you can't tell me because you know offhand the terminal velocity levels out. By the way, if the passage presents information that goes against what you, what you know, what do you do? You trust the passage. Here's the dangerous part about knowing too much. The passage may give you something in biomedical research or whatever, and that stuff will be antiquated. So it's because maybe it's like a couple years ago or a year ago. But you might be in a research lab working on the very same problem, so you know what's correct. But do you think they expect every pre-med out there to know exactly what you know, everybody taking optometry to know what you know? No. So then if you go into that test using your real knowledge, which is correct, versus the passage, who's going to win on the test? The passage. Okay? So no specialized knowledge, always go with the passage. But can you imagine if, if this really happened, you'd be like, oh my god, I'm dead. And you're like, oh god, I'm alive. And they're like, not again. <laughs> and you go for a whole nother round. Okay. But she did survive. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that would be horrible. It would be horrible.